So, and this is, and Halo is a big part of that. That's what I hate about him. Right. Okay. I understand. Steve, no! after, what, after, what, after what she said, man, uh, you, you're, you're, you go. I don't even think that's legal in Florida. Uh oh. I think you're about to get serious. Okay. Wow. Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going forward to the 26th century with two amazing actors from the Halo video game series. So without further ado, let's begin the fight. Our first actress guest is an actress and award-winning audiobook narrator whose credits include the Mario franchise, Left 4 Dead, and Ruby. Today, she joins us as the voice of artificial intelligence assistant turned interplanetary despot, AI CTN 0452-9, better known as Cortana. Please welcome Jen Taylor. Hi. Hey. Interplanetary despot. I love that. Well, you know, it's just, you know, that, that's, that's, I don't want to say tyrannical, I don't want to say anything else. I thought that's a nice ring to it and also leaves it a little oblique for maybe people who haven't gotten to that <laughs> stage in the Halo game franchise, you know. I don't do spoilers, but I drop seedlings of them mm, just, just in go. case. That's good. So there you go, indeed. Yeah, indeed. So, hey, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm in quarantine. <laughs> I'm in my first week of quarantine. Oh, goodness. All yeah. right. So, I'm okay. Well, all right. <clears throat> All right. Well, very, very good on that. And uh, I just wanted to say too, yeah. Um, I always felt that uh, audiobook narration is a very undervalued and underappreciated uh, form of, of vocal work, and you've done a great deal in that. And and again, it's garnished awards. Uh, and just for just for our audience, so what's what's what have you found to be the biggest challenge in doing audiobooks? Audiobooks are like the marathons of voiceovers. They it, it take you spend an eight hour day generally, um, and it is you have so many different characters that you need to create. Even if you're doing them subtly, you have to have different voices and different yes. points of view for everybody. Um, so it's just physically more than anything, it's physically taxing on your yeah. you know. Um, and you also have to do a lot of prep work. Yes. I mean, at least I do when I'm reading a book. I'll <laughs> read it a couple, you know, a few times before I voice it because I want to be familiar with it. So it's no, just no. a bit of work. Yeah. I, I I've seen I've seen many actors at our physical shows in the green room going over this. Yeah, I'm doing an audio book uh, when I fly mm -hmm. back this week and right. just doing the lines and the stanza and everything else. And the reason why I bring it up is because uh, at the physical shows, a very common question asked of you and other professionals is, hey, how do you become a voice actor? What do you recommend? And I always recommend, uh, I, always, I always point the kids towards uh, exploring audiobooks. And specifically, mm -hmm. I always say, divorce yourself from the story and listen to the technique and listen to the affectations because they're not going into full character, but they're getting those subtle moments as a two. And remember, it's all coming from one one reader. And I've had some come back and say too. So yeah, audiobooks and audiobook craft is very specialized and my hat is off to you and all others who do it. <laughs> it's fun, it's really fun. <laughs> Absolutely, and speaking of fun, our next guest is an actor and veteran broadcaster <laughs> whose credits include Septura Core, Super Bomberman R, and Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Today he joins us as the voice uh, he has performed since 2001, Master Chief Petty Officer John 117. Please welcome Steve Downs. Yay! How you doing, everybody? <laughs> wow. Good. So cool to be with you. So good to have you here, boss. How you doing? My little friend says hello. By the My, way. Little friend. <laughs> My little friend. My oh, little friend. Oh, so that's what's <laughs> under the helmet. Candy. Pez. Yeah. Yeah. Pez. I, I, I need a Pez. <laughs> Master Chief. How just Pez. <laughs> How you doing, boss? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's uh, great, great to be with you. Great to see Jen. We haven't seen each other in uh, in a time. very long time, and uh, it's great to, uh, if if only virtually, it's great to be with you. Absolutely. Well, thank you both for joining us here today. As always, we look forward to the time when the world gets a little bit back to normal and we can get you on our physical stages and get you back in front of your fans. But in the meantime, we're thrilled to have you here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. 
Good to be with you. Yay, thank you. Good to talk to everybody. So our team right now is going to the chat room, pulling out questions for us. In the meantime, I'd like to just start off with, I'd love to hear and for the audience to hear how each of you came into these incredibly iconic roles. Steve, you want to hit it? <laughs> we both try to pass it off. No, you, no, you, no, you. <laughs> uh, well, as far as Halo is concerned, um, uh, when I was uh, 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 Bungie, uh, who was obviously the creator of Halo, uh, they were originally based in Chicago, where I worked um, as a voiceover and a disc jockey for many years. And Marty O'Donnell, who was uh, the guy who cast all the voices and and uh, wrote and performed a lot of the music and all that, and happened to be, unbeknownst to me, a, a fan on the radio when I was on the radio. And he called me uh, initially to do Septera Core, and I had a there which was another small game that they uh, they had, and I did a, had a small role in that. And then about a year later, he uh, called again and uh, said, "We have this uh, new uh, new game coming out, and we'd like you to do the the title, you know, or the the main character." And and that was the beginning of a journey from what twenty years ago that uh that continues to this day and it's um <laughs> it's been a pretty wild ride <laughs> pretty amazing <laughs> you were uh you were the afternoon or the or the morning drive time uh uh time i was slot. the morning guy for the most morning, part i was a morning guy, guy on the drive in in chicago 97.1 mm, nice uh uh, I love the, I love the fact that there were there were locals and there were fans and and then they came to you for it. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the to me the strangest thing about the gig uh, is that I never auditioned for it. And um, you know, as Jen knows, I mean, you know, we audition. You know, ninety percent of what a voiceover talent does is audition. Yeah, uh, and and uh, I, I, and of that ninety percent, maybe you get you know uh, you know one or two percent of those things actually come to fruition and you know the biggest gig of my life uh is one that i did did not audition for marty just called and said you're the guy and let's do it so um, <laughs> isn't that nice yeah that was nice well uh jen did you have a um oh i had auditioned. more challenging path shall we say <laughs> i auditioned and i had a call back and <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I just went for my agent and got this audition, and um, it didn't seem like you know it was just another awesome video game that I got to do. But it didn't seem like at the time it didn't seem like a big deal, right? I mean, it felt like oh, cool. And then I remember when they came around with Halo Two, I thought, oh, I guess people must have liked Halo, yeah. so that's cool. We're doing another one. <laughs> You're doing another one. <laughs> How charming. Oh, oh nice. Sure, yeah. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. That'd be great. And yeah, yeah like yeah, like Steve said, we're uh, 19 years later going on going on 20. Um I I hope the hope they have something planned for the 20th anniversary. Uh I'll I'll leave it at that. But uh what um what's become your your fondest memory of being associated with this franchise? Oh wow! Wow, there's, there's that's a hard. So many, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for uh, twenty years, nineteen years, twenty years. Yeah. So many lovely things. I mean, we met each other at the tenth anniversary. Right. Wow. That was a nice moment. Ten, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, it I took mean, ten that, years that's for them to get you together. Wow. Yeah. So they they were doing the tenth anniversary of of, <clears throat> of Combat Evolved. And they had a big celebration in Seattle where Jen is. And, and, um, and I came out and, uh, that, that was the first time we had met and, wow. and, um, it was, you know, we, it, you know, instantly hit it off and they have been friends ever since. And, um, you know, certainly when you ask that question, that's, that's the first yeah. thing that comes to my mind there, there's a few other things, but that would be the number one thing is, is, uh, you know, finally meeting somebody who understood, you know, <laughs> what it was that it had been happening for, for the last 10 years and where we were going to go from here. You know? I think you're on a, it felt like we were on a journey together, but had never, you know, we'd never <laughs> met. And so to finally yeah. meet that yeah. person who's in the car with you that you've been talking to, but have never seen. Yeah. Right. It's, like, it's like, it's like meeting a pen pal. If anybody's old enough to remember what a yeah. pen pal yeah. was. 
know? That's a great yeah, yeah. analogy, actually. Right. It's a great analogy. It was like a pen pal. You're my pen pal, Jen. Oh, geez. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and uh, let me just throw this out. Um, have you, over the years, uh, have you, uh, you probably have, but uh, you've been, ever been recognized by just persons on the street or walking by. Hey, are you uh, are you a Cortana? <laughs> or are you are you the chief? Uh, I've had. I think that that's happened to me maybe twice oh, in okay. my entire. You know, because most people don't know what we look like. They don't care what we look yeah. like about our voice. Um, and I actually just had a moment when I was I was just in Budapest. And I was coming home from Budapest, and um, the, I haven't told you this, Steve, the customs, the gentleman at customs said, uh, you know, asked me some questions, said, well, what, what have you been doing in Budapest? And I said, oh, I've been working. And he said, really, what have you been working on? And I said, um, a TV show. And he said, uh, please be more specific. And so I said, Halo TV show. And the guy sitting next to him lost it just lost it and he said i knew it was you i knew it was you i could hear it i knew it was you and i got to cut them really fast after that man it was like, oh, cool. uh, that's why and steve uh, when did people stop remembering you for, oh you're the guy on the radio from maybe are you a guy who's master chief well that yeah that was sort of an interest i mean the the, uh, the beauty of silver is is that you don't um have to be recognized if you choose uh and you know which is which you know i i think jen feels the same way i mean it's a night you know when if you want to be a about it you can be you know if you want to you know get that table at the restaurant you got the halo card <laughs> and yeah. you know maybe it'll bump you up but uh <laughs> uh you know, it's been very very few times that 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 you know i i've been quote unquote recognized yeah. um you know all, like you know like jen says nobody knows what we look like and and yeah. uh, you know, play that halo cool. card i want to know <laughs> what's what's <laughs> i want to see the wind view you're breaking up dude yeah steve we're losing your oh, signal yeah, a little okay. bit oh hmm. Hmm. i'll tell you what steve if you do this log out and immediately log back in again that will sometimes reset this the 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 signal and okay, i promise so we won't do what we're joking about in the green room no we totally won't okay okay <laughs> all right let me try this all <laughs> right hold on hold on okay you guys he'll be Bye. back in like a half an hour <laughs> it'll take him a half an hour all right dish darling dish yeah okay no, i don't know steve's the greatest i adore steve we it really felt when we first met each other it was like oh my long lost buddy that's what it felt like immediately so i can imagine and, yeah. uh, and again this uh, uh this journey that these characters that you voiced had gone through because is because it is there is there's a narrative and there's a mythology and there's a canon to this and there's some fun points where the people playing the game get to blow stuff up and shoot things. You yeah, know, well, yeah, or shoot that's their friends. Super fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's all that stuff. But uh, in in the past past two decades, though, uh, you know, video games have just emerged beyond this. You know, they've really invested in the narrative. They've invested in characters, creating this this possession that people have for them, this uh, dormant people have for them, as opposed to just disposable player ones, player two. So, and this is and Halo is a big part of that. That's what I hate about him. <laughs> right. Okay. I understand. Steve, no! uh, after, what, after, what, after what she said, man, uh, you, you're, you're, you can go. I don't even think that's legal in Florida. Uh -oh. I think we're about to get serious. Okay. <laughs> wow. Fair, you're fair. real. You're for real. <laughs> I'm not uh, kidding. <laughs> and you're right. Let's get serious and let's roll some questions from our audience. Cool. We got some Lena, and this first one comes from John, who wants to know: Do you have a ritual you do to get into the mindset of your characters? Steve's yeah. got Steve's got a story about that. Um, I, you know, I, I don't really, I, I don't know that I have a ritual. I do my best to, if I'm coming back to play a character um, a second time, I do my best to do some research to remember <laughs> where we were before where we've there. left off um, so that I can continue that journey as smoothly as possible. There. Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it, 
and actually this was uh some advice that i got from an old um uh she's not old but 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 a, a voiceover coach that i had many doing whatever you need to do to get into character um uh, you know, whatever it takes. And, and, you know, one of her suggestions was, you know, if it's a certain piece of clothing that you, they may be, you know, for whatever reason, however strange it may seem to other people, if it helps where you need to go, if it's a shirt, if it's a, uh, you know, a pair of jeans, a, you know, uh, and for me, it was a pair of cowboy boots. And oh. that, that coincidentally, I happened to be wearing, and and, may, and maybe part of it was actually, a, you know, sort of a good luck thing. I happened to be wearing them when I did the first sessions for Combat Evolved. And so maybe it was superstition and, and whatever. But uh, every time since then that I've that I've recorded, you know, whenever I go into a session to do uh, uh, Master Chief, I, I wear these boots. And it's just sort of a a, a, a literal cue, a visual and a physical cue to you know put me on that path to get back to you know like jen says to re, you know so you you know remind yourself of who it is that you're because when we do these things you know there's usually three four and sometimes recently longer gaps between the time you're recording from from halo one to two two to three three to four four to five you know whatever mm -hmm. and um so you know what we, that so that's my thing is is to you know, do something physical that helps that, that reminds me that we're about to go back on this, this journey again. Can we see these boots? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. okay. Sure. Uh, you, can you give me a minute? <laughs> Absolutely. We'll They're quite unimpressive, but yeah. We'll talk no, no, no. I'll tell you what, uh, okay. John, thank you for that question. Let's roll another yeah. one. Talk, and talk amongst yourselves. No. <laughs> no, okay. Let's roll another question and we'll take it out with Jen. And when it comes to see the boots, so here's one from Jonathan Do you have any favorite outtakes while recording any of the Halo games? Well, I mean, we've for, it's been going on for so long. I'm sure that there's a million outtakes of me saying stupid things. Um, <laughs> I know that there's one online of me saying, Bet you can't stick it over and over again because I just couldn't. <laughs> I just couldn't get, it just sounded so sexual to me and I couldn't figure out how to make it not sound that way. Um, so I, I know that though, I, I'm sure that there's a, a ton of them, um, but I don't get to hear them. <laughs> though you always have, there's always a line that starts to, that you can't quite hit. I feel like in every game I do, there's a line that I can't quite, for whatever reason, I can't get it. And it over and over, I have to say it over and over and over again. And at a certain point, it starts to sound like nothing. Like the words don't mean anything anymore. So I'm sure that there's plenty of outtakes of me out there sounding like I don't know what I'm talking about. That's fine. Yeah, I, I, I know in some series and some projects, you know, if they do like at the end, they'll put together a gag reel or something of right. the outtakes and stuff. But uh, I guess they haven't done that with, uh, with yours, have they? No, I think it would just be too boring, frankly. Steve, do you have any favorite That's... outtakes that you... Ah, oh, there they are. The Master Chief boots. We should just name them John. Okay. Cool. John's. <laughs> <laughs> Master Chief boots! <laughs> we got a... First time ever, by the way. Hey, I, 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 trust me, I, I, I know the value of a, a good luck charm and everything oh, else. There it is. So yes, indeed, my x-ray specs uh, wristwatches. So thank you for sharing that with us. So thank you for sharing that with us. And yeah, I, I can appreciate that. And that's a good pair of boots to be lasting you uh, uh, two decades. Oh my gosh. Plus, yeah, and that's, um, well, and, and they were probably 10 years old before we started doing Combat Evolve. So yeah, they're uh, well broken in. Yeah. Do you have any favorite out any lot. favorite outtakes, Steve? He's frozen. Um, is the one that never uh uh you know landed on the cutting room floor, and this would have been Halo three, uh when uh the death of Guilty Spark was that Halo three? Um and and the voice of Guilty Spark is a guy by the name of Tim Dadabo, who's a good friend of mine and and uh, lives in Chicago and whatnot. 
and so we joke around all the time and it, it, you know tim's uh, uh character in as guilty spark is not a great deal different from who tim dadabo really is <laughs> <laughs> so when it came time to kill him off, I was taking a particular pleasure in doing it. And, um, <clears throat> and, and, you know, so we did what, what, uh, what, what Joe and, and Marty had written and, and, um, and then they were, you know, then we did a few more takes and, uh, we, you know, we started doing, I started riffing on this Clint Eastwood thing about, you know, from dirty Harry, you know, the scene where he's, uh, you know, got the, got the bad guy cornered in the coffee shop or wherever it was. And, you know, like, you know, and all the confusion, you know, I, I, uh, I can't remember, you know, was it f four bullets or five? <laughs> I don't know. Are you feeling lucky punk? So I did that as if we were getting ready. I was getting ready to off guilty spark. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and there was a bit of history behind it because, when I did Combat Evolved and, and Marty and I were talking about who Master Chief was, because at that point, you know, there was, I had no visual reference to it or, or, or anything else. He was just describing the game and the universe and, uh, and who Master Chief was. And his suggestion to me for a reference was, was Clint Eastwood. And he said, think of Clint Eastwood and Dirty Harry and, and, and the Spaghetti Westerns, a guy who doesn't say much, but when he does, somebody usually dies. And, you know, that's kind of who Master Chief is. So then going back, you know, several years later, I'm killing off, you know, Dirty Harry is killing off Guilty Spark. So, but it never made the game. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's confounding. Wow. Never made the game. Uh, well, that's 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 why they need a special edition. So, all right, well, <laughs> said that in. Jonathan, thank you. Great question for us. And what do we have next? Uh, from Haley, do you have a favorite quote from the games? Well, uh, I always, you know, which is a bit of a cop out, I suppose, but I always say that you know my favorite quotes are your favorite quotes, and and the ones that people ask us to do most of the time and <clears throat> you know they're the classics they're finish the fight you know and um i need a weapon <laughs> these are the ones that that they're the iconic ones and so they're my favorite ones and they're also the ones that i remember so. yeah that's true well those <laughs> my, my favorites are always the ones that i remember <laughs> Th those those are very good ones. So you 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 do that you do that. So how about you? Um, my favorite is because it's an emotional moment, and my favorite is um, "Welcome Home, John." That's my favorite because that scene was just so lovely to uh, to work on. Yeah, and that's what I you know remember about that. Oh, lovely. That's a good, good answer. Haley, thank you. That was a fun one. And what do we have next? So, so Christina, what was your favorite Halo to work on? <laughs> this is an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> it is. We have the same answer. We already know this. Lay it on us. Four was our favorite one to work on because we got to work together. It was, yeah. Uh, I mean, that was the highlight, you know, cer certainly for me. And, and uh, um, you know, plus the story became, uh, you know, a lot more. Shifted, um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, so it was just more fun to do. And, yeah, and Jen and I got to be in the this, in this studio together, doing it together. And it was That's just right. it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we, we had a good time doing that. I mean, that's a rarity in standard animation and in video yeah. games, that's yeah. unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. only other video game that I, that I experienced that with was uh, Left 4 Dead. We did some of Left 4 Dead, all of us in the same room. Okay. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, it's yeah, out there. That's not the case. Yeah, and, and like I said too, though, uh, the, the the narrative becoming just as important as the gameplay and everything else is creating this thing for going to a traditional troop style and scenes and stuff like that. So, and the performance, the power of the performances. So, Christina, thank you. Great question. What do we have? Uh, it comes from Christy. Oh, what other fandom do you think will be awesome to cross over with Halo? Hmm. <laughs> um, 
something quirky and completely not of the same world. Like not mm. another, you know, like Mario or something. I was um, just going to say Mario. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, it's I, so I, have, cool. I have read uh, recently, and this is just, I have no inside information on this at all. It's just what I've seen, you know, on ba bantered about on the in internet is that Master Chief is going to make some appearance in Fortnite. Now, I don't know that that's true, so don't quote me on that. No, but, everybody's uh, going to quote you, Steve. They're all I, quoting I, you. I, I, that's the word on the street. You heard it from Steve Downs, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I will, I will like that as well. Again, I saw no preparation, but several friends reached out to me. It was just like, oh yeah, Master Chief's going to be in Fortnite, which a lot of characters from other games and franchises are being ported into Fortnite. So it is not beyond the realm of possibility. Right. Mm. Right. That'd be so, cool. Make sure it's so cool. So we can have you back when we do a Fortnite panel. There you go. <laughs> hey, Christy, thank you. Well, you can actually, I think you can hear Cortana in Forza. I did a, I did Cortana in a Forza a couple years ago. So really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll put that in our back pockets as well. So, all right, Christy, thank you. Great question. What do we have next from Emily? Uh, what was the audition process like? Mm. You kind of went into that a little bit, but yeah, well, I can, um, I, I can tell you, I was, nervous because when I went in there, the woman who played Julie in the love boat, for those of you who remember love boat, she was auditioning. She was wow. there. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to get this. Julie from the love boats here. Yeah. How um, can I compete with that? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember actually when I got, I got cast, Jay, who was our engineer, said to me, yeah, you know, it was between you and another woman. And frankly, I could have gone either way. <laughs> That's what he said to me, real. which I love. Ego builder. Yeah. I know, totally ego yeah. builder. But I wonder if it was Julie from the Left Bone. <laughs> yeah. Who's actually I, I, a marvelous woman who I know, but I yeah. like to just call her Julie from the Love Boat. Sure. There you go. All right. Uh, all right. I, I did, I, yeah, I, I actually, uh, ha having said that I never auditioned for Halo, that's true for Combat Evolved. It's not true for Halo 4. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> because uh there that was the first game where it was passing from Bungie to 343 and uh you know there was some you know possibilities that there may have been some changes there yeah. and uh we um when i uh, so i was called and said they they you know the next halo games coming out they want you to come in and do some reading uh, under the guise of it being for technical reasons, they went to check out some equipment. But what was really happening was I was auditioning um, yeah. for a role that I had been doing for 10 years. But, you know, I mean, that's the way it goes. And, uh, you know, Master Chief, you know, the, as we talked about previously, the story was going to be a little more involved and a little different than just the chief grunting Cortana every, you know, 15 minutes. And, and and saying you know little one liners, it was going to be a little more involved. And and was I up for it? Yeah. Fortunately, it worked out. And it, but but it, and I knew at the time it was an audition. Pro I knew I was auditioning. And, I've auditioned uh, for Cortana three times. Three times. Yeah. Wow. For my initial audition, and then for Halo Four, as you say, yeah. and then for the TV show. Oh right, of course. Yeah. Wow. All well, right, talk about the TV show. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> is there anything you're allowed to talk about the TV show, or is it at the stage of there's a TV show? And... There's a. <laughs> <laughs> there's a TV there show. will be a TV show, and I'm, and I'm doing it. That's uh, probably about that, as much as I can. Yeah. Fair. Then... All right. All right. Just in case it pops up. So there's. Stay tuned, kids. Stay tuned, as we always say. <laughs> and Emily, thank you. That was a that was a, that was a good one. And what do we have next? From Miles and Owen. <clears throat> do you have any advice for young actors looking to get started <clears throat> in voiceover? I do. Yes. Um, I think the best thing to do is to take a beginning acting class. Um, because you need to know what directors are asking for when they're asking you. Also, you might want to take um, a, just a basic voiceover class so that you can get familiar with a microphone. Also, just if you have a microphone or you can use your, your phone, you know, um, just record yourself a lot and listen to yourself and, and 
listen to what you hear, depending on you know what kind of voiceovers you want to do. Steve and I both do it, it, as many different types of voiceovers as you can imagine that there are. Um, but listen to as much of the radio commercials that you can <laughs> that you can stomach. Listen to what they're asking for. When you play video games, listen to those you know the voices that you're hearing and try to try to mimic them because that's. Frankly, that's how I got um, uh, my role as Princess Peach was because I could mimic the this, this sound um, yeah. initially. So that's a great way to start. And then from there, you become more comfortable and you become sort of uh, you, the work with your voice. It becomes working with your voice becomes more familiar, easier. You you get more fluent, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Um, and then you can create your own stuff. Absolutely. I think there is a, a process. Um, I mean, if, if you go to the very beginning of, of, of exploring the idea of being a voiceover is, you know, that you, you go and, and Jen sort of touched on it about, about listening to your own voice is, you know, almost everybody, myself included, the first time you ever heard your own voice Back. recorded, <laughs> it was always a weird experience, you know, well, that doesn't sound like me and when of course it does and um you know i there is this journey i think you go through in the beginning to to understand that your voice is now an instrument um it, it's not just it's just it, it's not just a a vehicle to exchange you know utter sounds it is an instrument that you have to learn how to use uh, and you know, that's a process. And then, you know, Jen talked about, um, you know, taking acting classes and I agree with all of that. And I would add that any kind of improv work that you can do, uh, is beneficial uh, to anybody who wants to be a voiceover because so much of our work is on the fly. Um, you know, you go into do an audition nine times out of 10, you haven't seen the script until five minutes before you're going to read it. So any sort of improv skills that you can have um, to be able to jump into, you know, whatever character you're going to do uh, and, and be able to do it on the spur of the moment is, is helpful and beneficial. Well, these scripts that we do for, I mean, that's very important because the scripts that we do for Halo, we don't generally see the script before we do it. Yeah. If we're lucky, but oftentimes we don't see any, you know, most video games, you don't see your cast. And you're like, yay, I'm playing Marvel dog. And yeah. you show up <laughs> and you don't know <laughs> Marvel dog. Um, Marvel dog. I don't know. That's I'm thinking of my nephews and the ca characters that they would probably play yeah. Marvel dog. Um, anyway, uh, you don't know what he's going to do. So you got to show up ready to, you know, <clears throat> follow that path. Yeah. Whatever it is. Absolutely. Uh, I do. We do several panels on voice acting and stuff like that <laughs> at GalaxyCon. And hope to do them again. And uh, a common thing is to, don't consider yourself a VA person. Be an actor. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Develop develop your ear. Yeah. Listening is more yeah. at the beginning. The beginning is more important than what's coming out of your mouth. And um, have fun and two bits of advice I'll tack on. One, um, nobody needs somebody to do a pirate voice. We got plenty of people to do that. And two, a Monty, a, a Monty Python accent is not a British accent. <laughs> Very good. Very good tips. Pearls of wisdom there, yeah, Patty. <laughs> so, well, I guess I know it's, it's my, my job at Disney, so just see what it that way, too. But, uh, we don't hey. need any part more pirates. Yeah, we got all the pirates we need. Thank you. I think we have time for a few more, so let's roll a new one. And this comes from Boyd. Does your personality factor into your voice acting at all? I would say yes. Um, you know, you can't escape your physical being and you can't escape who you are as a human. Um, and so I, I personally, I like to think that Cortana is as snarky as she is because <laughs> I encouraged that. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, she got more and more snarky. I don't know. I'd have to ask Marty about that, but um, I, I truly believe that that's part of it. So yeah, I, I think so. Um, not all the time. You know, and not in every character, for sure. I'm very little. I, I'm not at all like Halsey, I don't think. But 
Steve. Yeah. Um, yeah, I uh, I would like to think so as well, only because I uh, I'm a fan of Master Chief. Hmm. <laughs> I like I like the guy, and 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 he is uh, as, as much of a, a hero uh, to me as he is to you know fans out there, and. Uh, so, you know, when I got introduced to the character, I was like, oh man, this is, you know, a, a, a boyhood dream come true, you know, to be able to pretend like, you know, you're, you're this superhero and get paid for it. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm going to answer a question for, um, Steve. I'm guessing it's a gin and tonic, right, Steve? Yes, it would. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Yep. Nobody wants to. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I, I, I'm with he you. Knows me well. I, I, I'm a gin man myself. So mm -hmm. when uh, when conventions come back into, uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, we'll have. It's fun. only three thirty eight here. I'm, no, I'm drinking. Yeah, put yourself, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Yeah, it's my it's my job to be yeah. sober, unfortunately. So, but uh, boy, great question. Thank you so much. <laughs> what do we got next? From Mark, have you taken up any new hobbies this year to help you pass? Mm -hmm the COVID time? I'm trying to learn Finnish. Really? Yeah. I have okay. friends in Finland. And so I wow. thought it would be fun to learn Finnish. And right now I can say really stupid things like, um, undalatti, which means, um, <laughs> a parakeet. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Velho, which is wizard, I think. If anybody's Finnish out there, you're probably like Mison Vesa. That means where's the bathroom? Um, oh, uh, look, somebody's playing the guitar. I've also well, been I'm trying gonna, to knit. I'm not, but no, yeah, but no, I, I'm not. Go ahead with your Finnish. The, finish your Finnish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you I, can, I can say a lot of dumb things like, where is the dog? Or, I, I mean, that's what they're teaching me. I don't know that that would help me in Finland. Because everybody uh, how, speaks English so well, they would just be like, whatever. "How do you say? How do you say hello in Finnish?" Uh, terve. Terve. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll keep that. I like to be able to just say uh, terve. Kitos, kitos is thank you. Um, yeah, I know All a lot right. of I know a lot of swear words too, just because I know a lot of. Well, Finnish. you can say it here, and nobody knows what they are. <laughs> no, I will. Well, I some, has some Finnish profanity on us. We might have. Some <laughs> We might have some fins on that. All right, all right. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll spare them on that. So, all right, Steve, you got out the guitar. What you got for us? No, I, I uh, so, uh, you know, what I've been doing a lot of uh, to, to pass the time uh, is is uh, playing really bad golf. And, uh, and I've disproven the theory that the more you play, the better you get. <laughs> You've <trying>. disproven <laughs> it. <laughs> not true. Uh, but, but, but I've started to... You know, you were a drummer. Right? I, I was a drummer, but I was originally a guitar player, mm -hmm. and I've had this guitar for many years. And you know, so now I'm, you know, beginning to break it out again. You know, uh, somewhat rarer, but but uh, yeah, to you know, to, uh, you know, play guitar again and learn more songs than you know the five songs I learned when I was 16 years old, which were, you know, Twist and Shout and Louie Louie and. You know, stuff like that. So uh, anyway, yeah, that's so, sort of yep. what I've been doing. Those doing. are good songs. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they were. But you know, there are others. Yes, there. What? Are. <laughs> you, you as a DJ would know. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, thank you. That was a wonderful question. Uh, what do we got next? There's one from Christy who wants to know what is your most memorable moment from the recording booth. Um, <laughs> well, when Steve and I did Halo 4, we did that last scene. I felt like oh. we did that last scene over and over and over and over again. And they would, tr you know, we would do it at the beginning of the session and I'm crying and then we'd go on and we do some more stuff and then they'd come back and say, you know, let's do that again. And I'm like, okay, and I'm crying again. And then we'd come back the next day and go, okay, can we try the last scene again? <laughs> so I, 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 there was a lot of crying. I remember that. A lot there of was crying. a lot of crying. A lot yeah. of crying. Um, 
but but uh, and and it, it it's also my favorite uh, uh, or most memorable moment from being in the studio. And, and my the one and Jen's heard this a million times. But so we're getting ready to do those final moments. Um, you know, we're basically you know Cortana is is about to go off into the into the ether, and um, uh, she. Uh, so so I'm I'm trying to work up to it you know so that i can be at the right place emotionally when that time comes and it, now remember jen and i did not know each other that well this was the first time we'd actually physically worked together and and yeah. and, and uh, you know all of that and i remember saying to her now jen uh it, you know in order to help me i uh may reach out to you um during the you know while we're doing this uh and and so i don't want you to freak out <laughs> if all of a sudden i grab your hand because you know you, uh, like i said we didn't know each other all that well and uh and jen's of course yeah cool you know no, no no worries so we get to that point and i got so sort of caught up in my own world jen reaches out to me to offer her hand to me <laughs> and i and i don't take it <laughs> You totally Tom Brady'd me. You I, I'm like, Tom Brady here. <laughs> I, like, hey, no, no. I just completely like you know. I, after giving her this big, you know, I might you know grab your hand. So don't. You know, you know. Oh, he froze. Oh, he froze. He froze. He froze. Steve, <laughs> right in the precipice of the story. He oh. come back. Oh my goodness. Wow, you're totally frozen, Steve. You're gone. He's oh, not no. coming back. Oh, is he? uh, you are uh, back. Oh, yes, you're back. Yay. You're back. You're back. You're back. Okay. You were you were literally at the precipice of the story. Uh and, yeah. Anyway, it was just yeah. I just you know, Jen extended her arm to me to offer to me as I had requested, and then I, like Jen says, I Tom braided her. I didn't mm. you know. I, I just I was so caught up in my own little world that that I didn't even do what it was I thought I was going to do. So. Uh, uh, and, and I remember when the scene was over, you know, Jen, you know, had been crying during the scene. And then when the scene was over, she's like, okay, I need another Starbucks. I'm over <laughs> in the corner, literally in the corner of the studio, you know, an emotional wreck, you know, trying to recover. And, uh, uh, yeah, so it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just very surface, Steve. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh christy thank you this is a wonderful question and mm -hmm. galaxy con viewers this has been my time with the voices of halo jen steve any final words for our audience before we leave today steve what a <laughs> am, I, am, am i unfrozen <laughs> you're yeah, unfrozen you you're are. Good. Tom, quick, what what is is it? uh it's such yeah, i mean this is so much for this is the first time I've done this sort of digital convention experience. I know Jen has done one, at least one, right? Uh, prior to this. Uh, and uh, I was a little hesitant. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I've been very much. I, I don't know that it replaces the real thing, you know, and I look forward to the day when we're all able to, uh, you know, to be, to be, you know, physically back together again, whenever that may be, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, but this is the next best thing. And I hope everybody's taking good care of themselves and yeah, uh, stay safe, everybody up and, uh, and, and keeping social distance. And, you know, I think it's safe to say the finish line uh, could be in sight and uh, you know, or at least uh, in the neighborhood. And so let's not blow it now, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hang in there. Yeah, be Thank careful you. and be safe. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Jen, Steve, it's been my absolute pleasure to serve you both here today. Once again, thank you for joining us here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. And thank you all for your great questions. Please take care, everyone. Bye-bye. And please keep washing those hands. Mm -hmm.